Okay, this is a demonstration video for the WAM 108T. So this is a complete unit as it should arrive to you. Uh, so inside the box you've got obviously the instruction manual, the main unit itself, uh, you've got three omnidirectional antennas, you've got one directional antenna, you have the, uh, the, the mains power, and you've got three different types of plugs, the UK, USA and European. And lastly, you've got a memory stick for actually downloading data from the device. So first thing you probably need to do is actually um, plug the uh, device in on charge. So if you just remove the device from the unit using the, the finger holes here, and you'll see down the sides is the, uh, the charging port. So obviously then you'll connect to the correct, pop that down a second. Obviously connect the, uh, the, the correct part to the plug. Uh, for us, it's a UK plug, so. Yeah. Obviously, that goes in the wall. That goes in the side of the units, and it displays a green light when it's fully charged. Now we've already put some charge in this unit for the uh, display video. So what we're going to do now is actually put the antennas in. Now on the top there, you'll see the three ports, and they are actually labelled for you. So you've got long for the long antenna, medium for the medium antenna, and short for the short. So simply put these three antennas in there or they're just simple push fit so put it in place push down till it clicks into place okay so each one of these is scanning along a different frequency uh, you've got uh, you've got uh, 2.45 gig which is mainly for Wi-Fi we've then got antenna cell which is for cell phones and wide one that, that actually scans along a, a wider range of frequencies where these two do a more in-depth scan on those frequencies now including the box you also have a directional antenna uh, that it can be used in any of these ports so it is optimized to be used with the the wide um, the wide frequencies the one that says antenna wide brackets long it's optimized for that it can be used in, in any one of the ports. Now, the difference with the directional antenna is on an omnidirectional, it means that it's picking up frequencies from all around. So if you're stood in a, in a room and you're picking up a frequency from over there, you can't actually tell where it's coming from. So pointing the unit towards it or away from it makes no difference because these antennas are picking up in like a, a circular direction. The only way of telling where a frequency is coming from with these antennas is actually to walk towards it or walk away from it eventually working out which one's stronger which one's weaker using the display it will show you which how it gets stronger and weaker and for that point you can actually work out where it's coming from with a directional antenna the way that will work is you'd actually put that so let's replace this antenna head simply by pulling it out replace it with the directional antenna now these two will still be working omnidirectional, the Y bands working directional. So what that means is, once again, if I've got a signal coming from this direction, by holding the unit in that direction, it will be showing me that it's stronger than it is if I held it away from. You'd actually see a physical difference. And from that, you'd be able to work out where it's coming from without walking forwards and backwards. For the demonstration, and to start with, we're gonna use the omnidirectional. Now for the next part, we'll show you the controls on the display panel. Okay, so to power the unit up, simply press and hold the OK button for a few seconds and the device will start up. Okay, I'm just gonna turn the sound off. Just for now, we keep the sound down. So, on this uh, main screen here, it's obviously giving you the different, uh, the three different types of scanning. So, on the far right hand side here, it relates to this antenna, which is the Wi Fi one. It's telling you 2400 and well, 2.4 and 5 gig, which should both both of those frequencies what Wi Fi uses. Here, we've got cellular, and you've got different types of bands. I think it's in the UK, we only use 900 and 1800. And we've got the wide one here, which is obviously scanning across the, the a range of frequencies. It will give you the strongest frequency it picks up 
here. Okay, so that's the main screen. This is like a live feed of what we're picking up now. Uh, but I'll go into the settings. If you simply press the OK button, you take into the, the menu. There's only several options on there. Uh, first, we'll go through them one by one. So you've got the main screen, which is obviously back to where you were. If we go again, that powers off the unit. I'm not going to show this one, but you press that, that will turn the whole unit completely off. We've got the set time. Now this, you'll want to set that up for the for the event login. So I'm not going to set it up correctly, but if you simply move up and down to select the, the correct digits and then along to select the next one. So and once you finish, you press OK. I'm not going to set it up for this, this demonstration because it doesn't make any difference for the, for the video. Once again, press OK. We've now got data log. If you click on this one, this is where all the, the data is logged. So even if, if you leave this in a room, it will scan all the time. So if I left it overnight, it will scan and it will give me any events that have happened during that time. And now press down, it will give me the time and the dates and the frequency and the duration of each event. So if I get a small blip, I can see it's only like three seconds. If it's a continuous and it happens frequently, you're going to want to investigate it more. Uh, but each one of those is logged, and this data can actually be downloaded off the device using the, the USB stick, which we'll show you later. Okay, now you've also got erase log, which obviously just click on that, that will actually dump the data. So press erase. Okay. That means that the, the log will have disappeared. It's, it's logging what's actually happening now, but the previous two number one and number two, where we ran 25 before. Um, so it's a delete all the data so we can start again, which is a good idea if you're going from one job to another and you want to keep the uh, data separate. Okay, and the volume control, which you saw earlier, simply press up and down to change the uh, the volume. Now that's the, that noise you're hearing is uh, uh, anything that's actually picking up in, in the room. Uh, you've also got, though, a beep which is like which replaces the the sound that we're hearing before it's much cleaner and I actually prefer this but for now I'm going to switch that off you've also got if you don't want any noise at all you've got a vibrate option so you can turn that on and off so instead of hearing noises the, the unit can vibrate and this one here is panel lights on off um, if you click on this press OK, you'll see there's a little logo light that appears here. Um, now, the reason you can turn this off is because if you want this to run an event overnight, uh, you what you do, you press and hold the OK button for two seconds, and it will say display off. So you press OK. Now, the unit's still running, but the display is off to say power. Uh, if you're going to leap for a long time, you might also want to turn off the, the logo light as well. So you just go to logo light. off, press and hold that for two seconds, press OK and now you're going to get slightly longer at the battery with the, with the lights switched off. Some people prefer to leave it on. Okay and the last one is the band. You can actually select to turn off certain bands. Now you probably won't need to do this but if you were in a room where you can't turn off the Wi-Fi for example and you don't want it to keep bleeping all the time you can literally select to turn off the two Wi-Fi's and press OK. You can see now it tells me that these are off so it's not scanning. Now what that means, if I start hearing a bleeping noise now, I know it's not the Wi-Fi that's setting off, it's something else. So you probably won't need that but it could be useful in that kind of situation. Let's turn this back on. Okay, we'll stop it there and we'll do a demonstration next with a actual now before you begin scanning, it really is best to turn off anything that, that already does transmit signals because you're looking for a bug that should be uh, a missing a signal, whereas all these devices already do that anyway. So you can either turn the device off or at least put them into flight mode. So on your phone, just hit the flight mode button. I think most computers have that as well, but if they don't, then you do need to power the device off. The less things that are transmitting, the easier it is. So turn off anything that transmits already. So uh, phones, Bluetooth headsets, um, Xboxes, Playstations, Wi-Fi routers, and even these days, smartwatches as well.
Okay, so for demonstration purposes, we've actually fitted this uh, double adapter with a um, listening device inside. The way this works is it's got a SIM card fitted. So what we're gonna do is actually call this SIM that's inside. And what it enables to do is if we're in another, another part, of the, another location, we can call this and listen live what's happening on the phone. Okay, so that's answered itself now, but I'm not there to demonstrate the, the plug, it's there to demonstrate the way this actually picks up um, the signal. So what's gonna happen now is as we move closer, you see that it's actually picking up on both the wideband and the cellular that it's actually transmitting. So it's picking up on 1800, it's EE, so it transmits on that signal. It's also picking up on the wideband and so you can see it on both. Now the, the way this works is, so with the omnidirectional, I'm having to move closer and closer to the point where, where it's there. But it's probably better to actually use the directional antenna. So I'll show that being used if I remove the antenna now. And insert the directional one. What you'll see now is the way this works is the wise one is scanning on all these frequencies and it's telling us there's something there. So you can see from here, we can see it's coming from that direction. If we move this direction, we're not getting as much. We get a higher signal from there. So we know it's coming from uh, from that direction. As we move closer, so this is just telling us we've got something. It does tell us the, the kind of range, but it just tells us we've got something. As we get closer, this antenna now kicks in and tells us that it's actually cellular. So this is just basically telling us there's something there, this is telling us what it is. So I'd suggest really scanning the room around, seeing if it picks up anything like it does, and if it does, go closer. This will give you a further investigation as to where it is. Now, other than that, the, the way of actually scanning is simply looking around, you're playing a game of hot and cold basically. It doesn't. It's not gonna bring you straight to it. It's a case of looking around, when you pick something up, you then need to rule out if it's not coming from another location. So just carry on scanning all the way around. Like this. You see, we're looking at this bar here mainly. Yeah. It did pick up something over there. It could be our router. Just come around here. You see there's a nice steady signal coming from there. It's a case of walking in that general direction until you pick up. Now you might you might find it's something that you're supposed to transmit, in which case turn it off or remove the object and then continue the, the search. But you, all you're looking for is something that is transmitting that, that shouldn't be transmitting. And this is just the aid to help you find that. Okay. Okay, so the last thing to show you is how to download the data stored on the device to actually view on a PC. So first of all, we need to have the unit switched on. And you should find a supplied USB stick. Now this stick has actually got the software you need for Windows on there. So don't lose that or format it because you'll need the software. Uh, all you gotta do then to download is simply plug the stick into the USB on the device set. And you see this message appear, USB download, do not disconnect. Now it can take quite a while if you've got quite a lot of logs on there. We've only been using this for a short while, so you see it's already, be, it's already done. So once that's done, you can just remove the stick and either carry on using the unit, or if you're done, then you can just turn the unit off. Once you've downloaded the data from the WAM, the next thing you need to do is install the software. To do this, insert the USB stick into the port on the PC, and it should pop up with the files on there. If the file doesn't pop up automatically, Click on the folder icon down here, navigate to this PC, and then find the USB stick in the uh, list of folders there. For me, it's Drive F. It might be a slightly different letter for you. Inside there, you'll find the two uh, files. You find the one that you downloaded, which is the, uh, the log, and the installer files. With the installer files, click on it and drag it onto the desktop of the PC, and let the files copy across. Once that's done, right click on the folder and click on Extract All. 
this will extract the files onto the uh, PC and it will create a different folder for you. See, one's been created over here. Okay, when that's complete, you can close down these other windows and click on the new folder. In there, you'll see some uh, quite a few folders, but the main one you need is a setup execute program. So double click on this and follow the prompts to install the software onto your PC. When that's done, you might have a shortcut created on your desktop. If you don't, just write the words WAM into the search box and you'll see the WAM 108T data viewer. Double click on this to open it. And then you need to import the data file from the USB stick. To do this, click on the import data file button. Once again, find your USB stick in the list. So this PC, drive F, and then the data folder. Now you'll be showing the data in a log format. You've got it broken down into the wideband channel, RF 900, 1800. These are the, the cell phones. You've also got the Wi-Fi at the bottom here. Um, on each one, you can click on open log and it will give you the, the log number, the time and date, the frequency and the strength and duration of each event. You can then also change how the uh, the log is presented. You've got display all, display 24 hours, or display just one hour. On the one hour view, you can move from hour to hour by pressing these navigation buttons here to take you through the different logs. Finally, there's also the wideband frequency display. Now, as these are broken down so you can see the different frequencies, the wide band without a close enough, a closer inspection you can't tell what frequency it's on so if you click on this button here and then move this black bar over the event in these boxes above it will show you the time of the date and the frequency of that particular event